So in the last video, we store the transaction information. Let's just get rid of this for now. Now, what we want to do is build this pay file. Remember at the moment, we're just echoing hello, which is pretty useless. So let's go ahead and actually build this up. I just realized as well that inside of member payment, we are catching a PP connection exception here, but we didn't actually namespace this. So what we want to do is we want to namespace this at the top or import this at the top. It's under PayPal, exception, PP connection exception, just in case you need to catch and do anything with that information. So back over on pay.php, let's take a look at what the what we actually need to find out from this. We obviously are going to need the start file. So let's include that source start.php. Now remember that when we actually did this over in payment, when we set up the redirect URLs, we had approved true or approved false. If you do want to go down this, uh, this method, what we can do in here is say if is set dollar underscore get approved down here we can say approved equals dollar underscore get approved equals true and then this will either be a true or false value depending on whether this is set to true or false so here we can say if approved otherwise do something else again you don't need to do this for else we can go ahead and just redirect the user to paypal cancel.php there are of course other ways of handling this and probably much better ways of handling this but for now this is probably just the simplest way to understand the callbacks so what we now want to do then is grab the payment id when we come back from PayPal. So let's just uh, go through to PayPal here. And let's sign in with the account information, our test account. And hit continue. Okay, so we've got the payment ID here, but what we're going to do is we're gonna look this up in the database. Remember, so we can set this complete flag if we want to. That's just created another record here just so we we have this here so we want to grab the payer id we can use this later when we charge the user so that is payer id that is in the url as well if we just go over here payer id is here so that identifies the actual user that we're going to charge we then want to get the payment id from the database so payment ID, we're going to prepare a statement. So we want to select the payment ID from the transactions PayPal table, where the hash is a placeholder. And then when we execute this, we can pass in the session that we stored in payment.php just here. So payment ID, execute, passing in an array. And in this case, we're replacing the hash placeholder with that PayPal hash that we stored. So we now should have the payment ID. So we can say payment ID and we can fetch the object or fetch this row as an object and then grab the payment ID like that. So if I do a var dump and kill the page, passing in the payment ID, we should see, there we are. So there is the payment ID that matches the payment ID in the database. And now that we have that payment ID, we know that uh, we're picking up the same payment ID from the URL 
via that hash that we stored in a session. So it's just a little bit more robust if you like. It's a little bit more long-winded, but slightly more robust here. So what we now want to do is actually grab the payment. So we say payment equals payment. We have a static method get passing in the payment ID. Again, this is all through the PayPal SDK, passing in the API credentials. Uh, payment is namespaced, so we need to import this at the top. So use PayPal API payment. So we've done that. We now have this payment here. Let's just do a var dump on payment and see what this looks like and kill this. There we go. So this gives us lots of different information like uh, the state of it, the intent, which remember we set earlier, the created time, uh, as, long, uh, as well as a few other things that we can do here. But as long as we know that this is correct, we can actually charge the user. So we now need a payment execution. So execution equals a new payment execution. And again, this is namespaced. So up here, let's use PayPal API payment execution. And now what we need to do is set the payer ID because we're executing a payment on that particular user that has authenticated with PayPal. So set payer ID. Where do we get the payer ID from? Well, it's come through from the uh, query string that we get back when we come back from PayPal. And we've already stored that in a uh, variable just here. So payer ID. Payer ID, that should be. So finally, we can actually charge the user. So we say payment, which we grabbed from here. Executing the payment. Passing in the execution, which remember set the payer ID. Passing in the API credentials, and that will then charge the user. So before we go any further, let's actually see that this does work. Over in our PayPal developer dashboard, we have this transactions uh, area here. We have a live transactions area as well. Let me just re-sign in. So this transaction area shows some other payments that I've made prior to this series. But let's take a look and see if our payment now is actually going to go through. And let's start this journey again. So I'm gonna click become a member. So if we check the last payment, it's on, uh, let's say 221. This is going to change because the time isn't 221 anymore. So let's enter my test account details, hit login. Remember that will have already stored a record in the database just here. So it's this, this uh, record here. Let's continue through to the site. And there we go. So obviously we would redirect after this, but if we go ahead and check out our transactions again here, let's just refresh. You can see here that this charge has now been made. So this is the new charge that we have. We can also see the pay resource or the payment ID ends in SSA. If we match that up here, we can see that that's this one here. So what's left to do now is change this to complete and also update the user here uh, and change member to one. So we'll return back to here and we'll go ahead and update this code. So again, this isn't ideal because what we're not doing is we're not checking that this was complete beforehand. You may wanna go ahead and catch any exceptions here just so that we don't update the user if this fails for some reason. So let's just comment this out quickly. So execute PayPal payment. We want to charge the user here. Remember, this gets the PayPal payment. So 
down here then what we want to do is update the transaction to do this we're just going to say update transaction we're going to prepare a statement here and we will update transactions PayPal we're going to set the complete field or uh, record to one that on that record where the payment ID equals payment ID as a placeholder and then let's go ahead and execute this passing in that payment ID which remember has come from the database initially I guess you don't really need to prepare this but it depends on how thorough you want to be so now that that's done set the user as a member so set member DB prepare and we want to update users we want to set member to one and that's where the ID is user ID so again here we'll just say set member execute this and the user ID comes from the session remember the currently signed in user like so so just to clear things up a bit we want to unset the PayPal hash that we created earlier and then we want to redirect the user to some kind of page so in this case remember we have a member folder which we could go ahead and just create a new file in let's save this as complete.php and in here we'll say payment complete and maybe a link to go back to the home page so this is going to go to member complete.php and we're done just to note again that this is very procedural there's no real structure to this it's very 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 procedural you would of course within your application structure this very nicely so everything will be done separating concerns of what's going on here and just generally make it a little bit tidier but of course we're just focusing on the journey of paying anyway let's finish up by just clearing up these two records so I'm going to remove these remember member is set to zero and let's see the final effect of this so I'm going to hit become a member we already know that once we finish this it's actually going to charge us the amount and in a live environment if you switch over to live within uh, your dashboard this will actually allow real users to make a payment let's enter our password log in and hit continue so again the transaction is complete uh, is uh, created in here with the complete set to zero but when we go through to the main page now we should charge the user which we've done we should update the transaction completing set to one the user should now be set to one as a member we're redirected to this page we hit go home and we are now a member so regardless of this member functionality whatever you're using PayPal payments for you now know how to set up the API or set up your SDK so you can connect to the API set up your app set the amounts and what you're charging the user for send them to PayPal send them back process the payment and there we go that is how we process payments with PayPal